Hello, St. James. I hope you're doing well. This is the fifth Sunday of Lent, which means next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And it will be also the first Sunday that we gather in person uh, out in the parking lot in a long time since before Christmas. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all. I uh, invite you to bring a lawn chair and uh, just plan on being present. We will have palms and uh, it will be a, a wonderful reunion for us to all be together next Sunday, but please let us know that you are planning on coming. There's a sign up uh, in the weekly email, so uh, so please sign up. We appreciate that. Uh, also, it all, also has the schedule for the rest of Holy Week. We will be offering uh, both uh, remote offerings that, uh, that can help supplement your at-home worship. Uh, and remember last week, uh, the intentionality that we, uh, that we put in to, uh, to, to making our house a place of worship. And so, uh, so we invite you to do that. We also invite you to come and join us in person as we will have in-person services on Palm Sunday, uh, on uh, Maundy Thursday, uh, on Holy Saturday, and on Easter Day. And then on Good Friday, uh, the church will be open from uh, 8 to 8, and you can sign up for a 30-minute slot to come in and, 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 and walk the stations of the cross and just pray and be still here in this space on on that holy day good friday so so we hope uh, th that all this helps make this a, a rich holy week for you and with that we begin blessed be god who forgives all our sins his mercy endures forever greetings from the updike family during this lenten season we miss our church community and eagerly anticipate the arrival of Easter and the time when we will all be together again. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise that among the swift and very changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, Jennifer and Porter, our bishops, Ben and Ted, our clergy. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nation, and for the well-being of all people, especially for Joseph, our president, the Congress, and the Supreme Court of the United States. We pray also for those in law enforcement, for their safety, their morale, and that they may know the support and gratitude of the communities that they serve. We pray for all those in the armed forces, their families, and all deployed in harm's way, especially Mark. I ask your prayer for all those who have suffered or feared discrimination mistreatment, or violence because of their God-given identity. Help us to understand, to acknowledge our corporate responsibility and guide us towards sustained healing, reconciliation, and unity. Pray for justice and for peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, the lonely, the burdened, the anxious, those who in prison, especially during this season. Pray for those in any need or trouble, especially, especially for Sammy, Sheila, Peggy, Ruth, Frank, Joy, Christy, Barbara, Ruby, Tom, Patty, Tina, Marie, and for those whom we now name either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers 
for the health care and emergency workers, those who continue to put themselves at increased risk to provide essential services and for those facing economic insecurity as a result of COVID-19. I ask your prayers for those who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for St. James Episcopal Church and School, our Stevens ministers, and their care partners. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died and any whom we now name either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for the faithful and growing relationship between the First Baptist Church and St. James Episcopal Church. We give thanks for our many blessings, which we now name either silently or aloud. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. From wherever we find ourselves, we offer our prayers to you, the God who promises to abide with us. During this time, may we know and trust your presence in our lives. Continue to bind us together, embolden us as your church, to be signs and agents of your hope, your healing, and your love. We pray this in the name of your Son, who came and dwelt among us, Jesus our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. Now among those who went to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, they, there will be my servant, there my servant be also. Whoever serves me, my father will honor. Now my tr soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. A crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him, Jesus answered. This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now, now, the, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this indicate he said this to indicate the kind of death he has to die. The word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strong rock and our redeemer. Amen. I feel like a preacher man this morning because this gospel reading from St. John is amazing for a preacher, particularly the, the request of the Greeks. Sir, we would see Jesus. I am told that many pulpits in the United States have that in, carved into the, the, the desk where the preacher's notes are. Sir, we would see Jesus. It's, it's a great, great text. And these words were addressed to a man that we know as Philip. 
In fact, one of the largest Episcopal churches in America, St. Philip's Cathedral in Atlanta, is dedicated to him. It's a saint's name for us, Philip, and some of us have named our sons Philip. But uh, the Greeks that approached him uh, knew his name, and his name, the name Philip in Greek, we would translate, it's a good folk here in that county name, horse lover. So really, the text reads, horse lover, we would see Jesus. I wonder what it was like to hang out with Jesus with a name like horse lover when a lot of the other guys had names like God is salvation. Horse lover. Hung out with those full-blooded Jewish followers of Jesus and yet Jesus had accepted him into the inner group. He knew Jesus well. And when people that spoke his language, that shared his culture, that were able to approach him, wanted access, they said, horse lover, get us close to Jesus. Get us close to Jesus. Now, scholars of St. John's Gospel point out that this moment in the narrative is critical because after the outsiders, after the foreigners, after the Greeks express the desire to see Jesus, the whole world is coming towards him. Therefore, it is increasingly close to that moment where he needs to be lifted up on the cross. St. John's Gospel cascades towards the cross after these outsiders come and want to see him who is to be lifted up that all, all, all might come to proximity to God through Jesus. Near the end of his life, writing from a Nazi prison, Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote, the church is the church only when it exists for others. Not dominating, but helping and serving. The church must tell people of every calling what it means to live for Christ, to exist for others. Another thinker of the mid-20th century, our guy, an Archbishop of Canterbury named William Temple said these words, the church exists primarily for those who are outside it. It is a mistake to suppose that God is only or even chiefly concerned with religion. In today's gospel, God in Jesus is concerned about some Greeks. And fortunately, a guy named Horse Lover was right where God needed him to be. So, what are we to make of this? In Lent of 2021, Episcopalians at St. James Church, what are we to do with this text? How are we to live under it? And I must admit that I would love nothing better than to be talking about this in an adult forum where we could have some feedback and dialogue. But I'm going to imagine that. And so I hope you'll enter into dialogue in your mind with me in this sermon. Uh, and, and let's pray together what it would look like in our time and in our moment, if we as church existed primarily for the outsiders. Let me share an encounter at a West Virginia campground on St. Patrick's Day involving my good friend Patricia Lyons. Patricia is a Harvard uh, graduate, both undergraduate in the Divinity School, an Episcopal priest, She's an avid camper, and she is in a lifelong struggle with Crohn's disease. She's one of the bravest and most articulate Christians I know, and a character. 
This encounter occurred this week. And I'm quoting her, her blog from Facebook. While at a campground, my scooter needed air. All dressed up for St. Patrick's Day, I headed to the maintenance shed and found four young adults. As I pushed the scooter towards them, two of them practically fell over each other to help me, and they noticed attached to my scooter was my Harry Potter broom. Two of them had overt clothing, jewelry, that was identifying them as part of the LGBTQ community. They noticed my broom, and of course I explained how I connected my broomstick to my scooter, and I named my scooter Firebolt. I said I needed air. They did everything they could to help me. We shared Harry Potter stories. They asked me why I love the stories. Because I'm a Christian, she replied. Girl, they said, you are in West Virginia. You can do Harry Potter or you can do Jesus, but you can't do both. Patricia said, well, that's unfortunate because J.K. Rowling, who wrote Her the Harry Potter stories, said she based them on her Christian hope. The three had been forbidden by their parents and church from reading Harry Potter. One said, however, the books saved me from the world. None of these three attend church now. They were all raised, however, in Christian homes. Patricia says that they went on to talk about the church. And she said the church is like the room of requirement in Harry Potter, where friends help one another build hope and skills and identity. One of the three said, that's your church? Oh, yes. And then she went on to say, sometimes old Voldemort is a politician and sometimes old Voldemort is a pastor. I'm sorry if anyone like that has ever tried to put a horcrux of hate in you about who you are. Bigotry is a horcrux. There are Christians who will help you fight that dark magic. My faith sets me free from it. And she ended her blog by saying, they had never heard of the Episcopal Church until today. All sorts of Greeks are all around us. Like horse lover, we need to know their language. We need to be able to speak to their pain and let them see Jesus and his infectious love, even for the likes of them. Last week, we gathered under God's word, and this, and this week, we gather under God's word. But in between, we're citizens of a country that is reeling from yet another mass shooting. Some of the victims have not yet been identified. They are so marginal to American life and culture, and they do such marginal work, and they live such invisible lives, struggling to make enough resources for their family, and yet, as horrifying as it is to what happened to them, it's also horrifying for me to realize that some of their bodies 
have not been identified. They are that invisible in our world. They are that outside of society's regard. Robert Aaron Long is his name. Our broken fellow Christian, the man who this week took their lives. He was raised in the community of the body of Christ in the church. And feelings of remorse over his addiction and despair, and despair led to rage, and rage led to the pur purchase of a gun, and a gun held by a man raging at himself cost human life. I wish Robert could have met a Philip. I wish Robert could have met one of those outsiders, outsiders that I know pretty well who live their faith in what some people call basement Christianity. The basement Christianity of an AA meeting or a Narcotics Anonymous meeting, or a meeting for those suffering from sexual addictions. Those meetings happen in our churches, usually in our basements. I wish he had met someone who had struggled with life in such a way that made them feel that they were outside of God's mercy and love and hope and transformative power. I wish they could meet, I wish he had met some Christians who have been there and felt that shame and also felt the love that had transformed such shame. The outsiders are all around us. It's not just edgy kids in West Virginia, but sometimes the cross of Jesus draws us from that which demeans and destroys us. The person who points us to that love because she has found it becomes a bridge to hope. On this fifth Sunday in Lent, I hope that we would commit ourselves to being such bridges of hope for the outsiders. As I was walking into St. James Church 10 minutes ago, I had the most amazing encounter. Two people I've never met we're talking to each other behind an apartment, right on the street where my truck was parked. I got out, I had this on my neck, of course, and I was talking to them and I said to the woman, what do you do? She said, I'm a massage therapist. I said, oh, it's been a bad week. I'm sure you're upset. And her friend said to me, would you pray for those women who died? And so 13 minutes ago, as I was preparing to preach for you, I was praying on the street with my two young friends for the women who died. May we increasingly exist for those who search and seek. And that may mean surrendering our insider status so that we can be bridges to Christ's relentless love for all.
Amen.
go mami and cheerna hu, agus go goody she hu. The Lord met the light of his face, and the goodness was hurt to be brecht upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Niech się Pan błogosławi i strzeże. Paka se lumineze faca lui peste te. Fechoneka. Jehova, pirumu kam ninda melu yarti. Neneka samad. Kosi fuini alafia. Remember that life is short. We have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be quick to be kind. Make haste to love and the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Our worship is now ended and our service in the world begins. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.